Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by H&R Block. You got people. For an almost there, your call 1-800-HR-BLOCK or visit hrblock.com. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Well, it's Like Is 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. So baby wants steak, baby gotta wait because I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya, lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Wanna get laid? Gotta be an oh. asshole. Spike, use prolac, fix, with a basco, hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Pooh. Got a knocked up, but you look in the switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. My kiss 101. My kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. My kiss 101. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. You know the uh, deal on this class. Many weeks we begin our class by telling you what we are not. Uh, we are not marriage counselors or even marriage experts. Hell, I've been divorced four times. I do not recommend you get married. If you are married, I don't recommend you stay married. If you're looking to improve your marriage, please see Dr. Phil immediately. Do not, do not call here. I can't make your marriage better. I can't save it. I can't fix it. And I don't claim to be an expert in that field. My job as your professor is telling guys how to get laid. That's what I do. The purpose of dating is getting laid. You understand? Getting laid. The purpose of dating is not to go out to foreign films. It's not to go to Starbucks. It's not to go to political rallies. It's not to go to the library. The purpose of dating is to get laid. I can't state it any more simply than that. Your job on a date is to figure out how to get her in the sack. If you have a date scheduled for this weekend and you're not certain that your immediate goal is to get into the sack with her, cancel it now. Right now. Now. Do you understand? My purpose here is to keep you focused, to keep you on the straight and narrow, to remember that spending more than $40 on a date is a waste of time. Doesn't matter how much money you spend on a date. A woman decides before you get to her front door whether or not you're getting any tonight. And they use as excuses, oh, I don't have my uh, diaphragm with me. I don't have my panties with me. I don't have an extra pair of panties for tomorrow. I don't have clothes for work tomorrow. I don't have... Believe me. Women know when they're going to give it up to you because they are prepared for what might happen. Like they might have to go to work late tomorrow. They might have to go to work in a different outfit than what they wore today. They are prepared with birth control. They are prepared with, uh, you know, a toothbrush and things like that. Trust me, it's all planned out in advance. They know 
So spending more money on a date is not going to change things. The decision has already been made. So you must spend as little as possible, as little money, as little time, as little energy as you possibly can. Like as 101 students don't date single mothers. We're not in the business of being your sperm donor. We're not in the business of giving you money to help you and your little bastard child. That's not our business. We don't care about that stuff. We don't want to be the father of your next illegitimate child. Do you understand? We're leaving that to you girls. We have no, I mean, zero interest. Zero. You understand? Jesus. I, I explain this all the time. A lot of you guys just don't get it. You know, we are tired of being, uh, you know, uh, promised things that are never delivered, or we're tired of flirting, and we're tired of, uh, you know, uh, thinking that uh, the more time we spend, the more likely it is you'll give it up. We want to figure that out early. We believe in the three strikes you're out rule. If a woman does not put out the first three dates, there's just no chemistry there. It has to be said. When there's chemistry, you want to tear each other's clothes off. And even if a woman wants to wait a date or two so you don't think she's a slut, which I'll, I'll, I'll allow for that. Because in this country, women all feel like they're sluts. If they want to jump right in the sack with you and you figure out that that's what they want, oh, my God. But the thing is, they have to want to. Within three dates, if they don't feel comfortable with that idea, it's time to go. Don't waste your time. This has nothing to do with whether she's a an eight, a nine, or a ten. doesn't matter. If she doesn't get in the sack with you within three dates, the requisite chemistry is not there. If she has to learn to love you or learn to be attracted to you, just move on. Move on. Some of you boys are just completely immature. Uh, I want to say to all you boys who insist on having girlfriends or getting married at 17 and 18 and 19, a lot of you boys in the military, don't be stupid. You may have nothing today, but you don't know how your life is going to turn out. I had no idea I was going to be a self-made multimillionaire later in life. I had no idea. I got married thinking this is as good as life ever gets. This is as good as uh, my career is ever going to get. There was a time when I made $28,000 a year, and I felt like I was lucky to be getting that. I had no idea what kind of money and all the uh, accumulated wealth that I would enjoy. No idea. Had I known that, I never would have committed to half these broads, and I'm trying to tell you, don't do it. Not only uh, should you not do it because you shouldn't settle so early, Many of these broads are dream killers. Many of them will keep them keep you from attaining your goal. Women don't want you to do better than you're doing today in your career because they all know instinctively that when you're doing better in your career, you'll get a better grade of chicks. Many women will try to stop you from advancing in your career because they are afraid that if you get better at what you do, if you make more money, if you become more successful, if you move up the ladder, if you get promotions, if you get titles, if you ultimately own businesses, own companies, own more than one business, they know that you are going to do better. And you'll leave them behind in a cloud of dust. Many women, under the guise of loving you and saying they're helping you, what they are really doing is digging their claws into you and trying to keep you at the level you're at now. They don't want you going any higher. They're goddamn dream killers. You don't want that in your life. No getting married, no commitment, no having babies. It has to stop. Boys, it's a condom 100% of the time. This is not the dopey AIDS lecture or STD lecture or HPV lecture. I know you guys don't give a crap about that. I know you guys think you're going to live forever and this will never happen to you. So I'm not even going to waste my time talking about spreading of STDs. I know you couldn't care less. What you should care about is having to pay for some little skank's baby. Having to send her money for the next 18 years, long after you've had any sex with this broad. No babies. No giving your sperm to anybody. And you boys, by the way, I, I, I have to say it because the pull-out method, it doesn't work. If that's your method, stop. Stop. 
The pull-out method doesn't work. You need condoms. End of story. End of story. Make sense? Now, you've got questions about getting laid, questions about how to spend less money, waste less time and energy on broads who aren't going to give it up to you. I'm your man. I'm your professor. If you're a woman who disagrees with or is angry about what your professor is saying, that's what a classroom is all about. Vigorous debate, discussion, compare and contrast. You know what it's all about. Now all you need to do is call in. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I don't want 29 dimensions of compatibility. I want one dimension of underwear. I don't want to pull it off. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. I am your professor. At 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. This is Steve entering our classroom right now. Hello. Hello. Big fan of yours, Tom. Thank you, I got you, a predicament. I got right. a predicament. I'm ready. Calling the professor. Yes. I am, I am dating a 10. Uh, she's 27. She's the kind of girl when she walks into a room, everybody wants her. I've got her. The predicament is uh, she wants to get married. It's a do-or-die situation. I met her in San Francisco. I'm from L.A. And she is a 10, and she's the first girl uh, sexually who has rocked my world. She likes to have sex two, three times a day, every day, and it's coming down to the do-or-die question. And I just don't. I, I've never even had as much as a 7. This girl is a stone fox calendar girl, and I'm trying to figure out what the heck to do here. Does she want your money? Can you tell? I don't have that much money. When you say you don't have that much, how much do you have? I make about forty thousand dollars a year, and that's it. Really? Yeah. And you? How did you get a ten? Do you have a fourteen-inch personality? No, she's got a lot of personality. She's no, no, very... I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, oh. I said, how did you get a ten? Do you have a fourteen-inch personality? Uh, more like eight and a half, whatever. An eight and a half-inch personality. Okay. Very nice. Uh, all right, so uh, she needs sex. <laughs> now, how much uh, does she make? What does she do for a living being so perfect looking? She just works retail. Really? Yeah. She wants to settle down, you know? Wow. Can you get her to sign a prenup? Uh, Probably. I, it's not that I don't make that much money. It's not about that. But, you know, will but, you, but here's the thing. Will you never make that much money? Will you never win the lottery? Will you never cure cancer? I could make a lot of money someday. I plan on it. All right. I see you're 48, though. When do you plan to start? Well, I'm, I'm on it right now, but I get I get, the, I get your picture. Yeah, I mean, I'm 51. I, you know, I've been working on this for a while. Yeah. I mean, did you just decide you needed money? What happened? Uh, you know, I've been an artist for a while, and yeah, pretty much, Tom. It was kind of like, hey, I think I want to make some money in this life and make life a lot You better. finally realize that most artists don't make money until after they're dead. That's right. I don't want to be another Van Gogh. He'd be a billionaire today. <laughs> what do I do, Tom? Well, Steve, uh, I never recommend marriage. Uh, now, if you can get her to sign, if she's a 10 and you manage to attract a 10 with a $40,000 a year salary, uh, I would recommend getting a prenup. And then, and then, and then your explanation, if it comes up, is uh, look, yeah, you don't have anything to protect anyway, but it's, it protects both of you. Which Fine. it does. If so you're saying you're saying sign a prenup and marry this girl. No, I'm saying I don't recommend marriage. I recommend uh, resisting resolutely for as long as you can get away with it. Well, I've, I've I've resisted now three years, and she is at the end of her, and she you know she gets hit on twenty five times. A day. And does she want children? Yes, she does. Oh boy. But but so do I. So. Oh, you do too. Yeah. Well, and she's a ten. You're talking perfection here. I'm talking, my friends say, Mike, she's not just a 10, she's an L.A. 10. Holy cow. Yeah, well, I'm not kidding you. The kind of girl, and, you know, the kind of girls you see in porn movies, like, they do, those girls don't exist, do they? They do exist. And she works, re so you were at a store and you met her at a store? I, I met her at a, at, a, at, a, at a club up in San Francisco. Holy cow. Getting out of something, I was just getting out of something. The timing was perfect. I, the gods were shining on me, Tom. I don't know what I can tell now, you. Now, does she, she, st she still lives in the Bay Area? 
Yeah. Well, maybe as a stopgap measure, maybe at the very least you want to have her move to L.A. Yeah. Right? And so you can at least see if you could stand to be around her all the time. Because a lot of these long distance relationships look a lot better from a long distance. No, I know. We we've been together two and a half, almost three years. No, you haven't. You've been dating somebody who lives four hundred miles away. Yeah. <laughs> for well, two years. Spend... And that means you've been seeing her what? Once every two weeks? Yeah, we and we did spend two months together one time. It was fabulous. It's right. just coming down to the do or die thing and I feel well, like but, but the like... thing is you might be able to stall her off by saying, Why don't we try moving in together? And I promise I won't hang you. I won't. Uh, do. It won't take forever. But let's just let for for both our sake. Let's spend the time together, and let's see how it goes. Okay. Let's suppose that goes great. After six months, okay, baby, let's get married. I think you definitely look. If she's a ten, and I see here you're you're twenty years older than she is, you only make forty thousand dollars a year. This is one of those rare circumstances where if you can get her to sign a prenup, if that's what you have to do to keep her. Yeah. Well, maybe in that case, but you don't want to be paying any spousal support if it ends. Right. You need a prenup that says no spousal support. I never thought I'd hear Tom suggest maybe marriage. Well, might. I'm not suggesting it. I'm suggesting you <laughs> resist it resolutely for as long as you possibly can. But this is a very unusual situation. Very few it guys make. Very few guys who make forty thousand dollars a year can attract a tip. I know. This is why I called you. I didn't know. There's nobody else in the world who could answer this question. I yeah. Think, professor. Well, uh, after you have resisted for as long as you can, uh, get a good attorney to craft a good prenup. It'll cost you about five thousand dollars. Also, she has to have an attorney as well, preferably okay. one that she chooses. All righty. And Did and you... you know, if she asks any questions about it, it's all about it. it's not that you don't trust her. Uh, the, the the courts in California are very arbitrary. You don't trust judges. And if it ever got down, yeah, if it ever got down to that, which you hope it wouldn't, you just want to make sure that the both of you are protected. Gotcha. All right, Tom. Now, let me know. You, may, I, you know, it's very rare that I would give an answer like that, but I, I can't name a lot of forty-eight-year-old guys making forty thousand a year who call in and say they're dating a ten. Yeah, I wish it was just me who thought that. Everybody who sees her thinks that, and every she's getting proposals three times a week. But she wants you. She loves me. Because of your big personality. <laughs> it might have something to do with it. There we go. <laughs> All right, Steve, good luck. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Every once in a while, you have to surprise him with an answer like that, because what do you do? What do you tell the guy... Uh... He's 20 years older than her. He makes 40000 a year, and she wants him. Just make sure you don't end up paying her any alimony. Please. And he wants to have kids. All right. He should live with her for a while, at least find out if he can stand to be with her without cutting her head off. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Melissa on Lycus 101. Hello. 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 Hey, I have a quick question for you. Um, I've been listening to your show on and off for years, and um, I don't get the gist of what you preach. What I, do you mean? What is it you don't get? Well, I think that I think you're kind of wishy-washy on most issues. Be specific. I would love to be specific. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. Um, when you talk about kids, teenagers having sex, you think that it's okay for teenagers to be having sex? It's not a matter of whether I think it's okay they're having sex, whether I think it's okay or not. Well, that's true. They are having sex whether whether or not you think it's okay. It doesn't okay really matter if I think it's okay. By the way, I had sex at 13. That's sad. It's fact. That's sad. Well, you uh... You preach it. You pre but you preach it. You preach, you preach to children so you know that young kids listen to your show. I preach to everybody. No, you know that young kids listen to your show. Well, I, our audience is generally uh, between 18 and 44. Okay, so so then it is adults. So, well, that's so generally who listens. Yes, it's a very small population under 18 that listens. Okay, well, I was just curious because sometimes... But I I, by the same token, uh, we know that people as young as 11 are having sex. 
Well, yeah, that is a fact. But, okay, so you don't, do you believe in marriage or don't you believe no, in marriage? No, not for men. Not at all. No. So, what it, so how are we supposed to croak? Procreate and populate. Them. Well, I just read a story yesterday. Sixty-six percent of all African American children are born out of wedlock. Uh, and procreation continues to go on. Well, yeah, but you have to understand that America has a zero population growth. Tom, that's great. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying, so you don't. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Why what doesn't you- make any sense? Why would you preach for people not to have children? I didn't preach for people not to have children. I preached for men not to get married. So then you don't think that children should grow up in a healthy home? Uh, It's not a matter of what's good for children. The audience is not children. It's adults, primarily men. And marriage is not good for men. But isn't, shouldn't you be teaching or isn't it? Good to be responsible. I uh, it's no. You know what? It's good to do what's best for yourself, which is what so people you, do anyway. So you preach selfishness. I preach doing what's best for yourself. By the way, having children is also selfish. Well, Everybody does what's good for themselves. Well, that's subjective. You don't have children to help society. You have children for your own ego. Well, yeah, that's what they say. That's what it is. Having children is no less selfish than not having children. (laughs) Wow. You're good at what you do because you can just... Because I'm right. I'm not twisting anything. You are, though. You, exactly. you want to have children because it's your own thing. You, have, you, you want to know what kind of little baby you would create. Oh, because you're so beautiful and you think you'd have a beautiful kid. And the guy you're dating or married to, he's, he's handsome. And the two of you together with beautiful kids, you, it's all a big ego trip. It has nothing to do with helping society or being selfless. Okay, so if we didn't procreate, what would happen to the world? People do procreate, so there's no point. And by the way, I, if only 100% of the population of the planet Earth listened to the Tom Likas show, the poor and the dumb continue to be human Xerox machines and continue to crank them out. It's because they're uneducated. There you go. So don't worry about the uh, population shrinking to zero. It's not going to happen. Okay, so you think that men should just have as much sex with as many women as they can. And have as much fun as they can and make as much money as they can and be as successful as they can, yes. Because money is happiness. Oh, boy, uh, let me tell you, uh, and now I, that I am a self-made multimillionaire with homes in the Hollywood Hills and up in the wine country of Santa Barbara, let me tell you, yes. You definitely need to tell people that all the time. Ah, uh, yes. Why? Why do I need to tell people that all the time? Yeah. I tell people that all the time because so they know that this is something they should be planning for, their own success. So you need to tell people how successful you are all the time? so that I tell know. people all kinds of things about myself all the time. <laughs> okay. Well, I do. Thank you. <laughs> do you understand, darling? It's all about the medium I am in. I know this is probably over your head. Uh, but not, but this I is actually, this I'm is an woman. this yeah I'll bet you are this is the radio business maybe you read a little Marshall McLuhan then if you're so well educated and find I out what I'm talking policy. about the way people use the medium I, I'm going to put you on hold so I can finish this thought uh, the way people use radio is uh, uh, is different from the way they use television or movies uh, uh, people are coming and going all the time. So people do not sit down and listen for four or five hours every day to a radio show. They come, they hear five, ten minutes. Some of them listen for up to 45 minutes in a day, and then they go away. It is necessary to repeat certain information because many people don't hear it the first time or the second time or the third time. That's how it works. That's why certain commercials are repeated. That's why top 40 radio stations play the most popular songs. They don't play them once a month or once a year. They play them every couple of hours or so. Because of the way people use radio, they get in the car, they turn the engine on, the radio goes on. Then they get out of the car, they turn the engine off, the radio goes off. You have to repeat things. That's the way it works. Oh, I, okay. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just...
Oh, Tom, you know what? I, I hope you're <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Idiot. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Shaw on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, man? Going I great. actually, first and foremost need to say hello dad hello son okay first off man i hope that you're writing down all these hours that you're spending on the radio because these are public and community service hours sir you are doing a community service yes you are you are spouting truth and telling these dumb people that i see all day long to use condoms and stop procreating right you are doing community service sir I and am. that idiot that was on right before me does not understand that most people in this country are almost retarded. They are functionally retarded. And these people should not be procreating at all. Now, on to the issue, Tom. I think what people are misunderstanding is that people aren't supposed to be married. It was a function of necessity back when. I had a girlfriend for a year, Tom. I just got out of a relationship. She was great. Everyone loved her. My parents loved her. My brother loved her. I loved her. She was a great girl. But uh, we, had to, we, had to, we had to come up with time. Want to know why, Tom? Why? One problem. That's all it takes, man. You can't sacrifice for relationships. You have to be selfish. That's the point. Why? Why would I give up something? For someone that I don't owe anything to, right? Uh, if you have make... to, if you have to compromise, I mean this sincerely. Uh, the more you have to compromise, the more likely it is you're with the wrong person anyway. Absolutely. I mean, and the thing was, it's not like this girl was was rude or or mean or anything. She just needed me more than I needed her. That was it. That was the only problem, Tom. I mean, this girl was great. A smoking hot chick. Everyone loved her. I thought she was everything. I mean, she was everything to me. She was awesome. She was great, good friend, the great in the sack, fun to be around, fun to bring to parties, fun to bring with friends. I mean, the whole nine yards. But there's some things you can't compromise on, man, and that's what leads to the divorce rate we have today. People think, oh, well, I'll just settle down, and, and they're good enough. There's no such thing as good enough. Not in this country, man. Not in this country. You can't, you can't have good enough. I agree with you. I, I, there's, it, it just it baffles me when people call up your radio station. I think part of the problem is that you put a lot of dummies on your, on your, on your show a little too often that, that don't have any idea how to formulate a proper opinion because, I don't know, whatever, they're not uh, getting their education in the right places or, or whatever the problem may be. But uh, I think that, uh, that the majority of people need to understand that, that relationships aren't for everyone. They're for some people. And you can't just get into a relationship for no reason and, and marry someone for no reason. I mean, my buddy just got married. He's 20. 22 years old. He's been in a relationship for three weeks, and they're getting married next month. That has a high that has a high chance of lasting. Yep. He, he's he's in love with this girl, quote unquote. Well, love. He'll find out the hard way. Tom Likas. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six six. You are the voice of reason in this godforsaken world. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. I am your professor. Let's say hello to Phil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Good afternoon, Dad. How are you? Doing okay, son. Excellent. Tom, I just wanted to call in and voice my utter disgust at these inarticulate, stupid women that call in and try to argue you down on your teachings. It is absolutely absurd. Well, you see, you see how poorly they do. Well, first off, they're they're very ill versed. They 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 can't express a thought. They sound like Paula Abdul on American Idol. You know, can't string a sentence together, can't convey a thought. And then when you prove your point to them over and over again, you hear the same. Well, yeah, I guess you're right, Tom. 
And it's the same thing over and over again. We, we constantly hear these women who do not like what you preach and, and do not like your teachings, and they try to call in, and time and again they flounder. And I, I think it's, it's absolutely proof positive that you, you are the master, sir. Thank you very much, Phil. Well, that is all I wanted to say, and uh, could you take me out polka-style, please? Polka-style, I certainly can. Oh, yeah, 1-800-5800-TOM, it's Likas 101. I am your professor. This is Enrique on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. I uh, just wanted to say that I think that you're right about a lot of things and that single guys should do what they want to do. But I do think you're in error where you feel that uneducated people are procreating when I think it's ed educated people that require marriage in order to, to uh, procreate. You know, I think that, that uh, that's, that's, uh, that's an error you're making there. Well, why do well, you say it's an error? Uh, why? Because I don't agree with you? Well, well, I think that you're you're making an error because the in, in order for people to even put food on the table, let alone have an education, um, it provides a more stable environment to pe for people to get education. So I think. How does it provide a more thing. stable environment for people to get an education? Well, when there are two, it's, it's no statistically, it's it's true that that uh, there are more stable children that uh, probably. We're not talking about whether it's good for children. Wait, wait, stop, stop. stop. Okay. I I have said on this program that marriage is great for children. Yeah. You see, so you're clearly not listening to me. Okay. Marriage is not good for men. There is no benefit to men. Uh, you don't see that there's any uh, satisfaction in making sure. I mean, if, if uh, you raise happy children, then that makes you happy too, uh, right? Well, again, uh, first of all, most men who have children are hoodwinked or tricked into it. It happens at a time that they're not ready for it, and we're not planning on it. And you have to admit that's true. Um, well, I don't know that that's not true. I've seen very many happy people. And, I'm not and... saying there aren't happy people, although we did a story recently about uh, an organization that actually researches happiness. And they have found point blank that the more children people have, the less happy they are. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I think it, you're, you're definitely a product of American culture, which is very individualistic. That's uh, where we I... live. I do. I do. I think, yeah, definitely. But We don't I, live in other countries. We live in the United States of America. I understand. But how can you say that more, uneduc more uneducated people are being created? Um, no, that's not what I, I said. You Again, you, you misheard me and misquoted me. Okay. I said people who are less educated are having more children, and you know that's a fact. Yeah, but wouldn't you say that... The poor and the dumb will pick up the housing. slack. That's what I always say. Anybody who calls this show and says, oh, the population is shrinking, oh, the poor and the dumb will always pick up the slack. Well, you're misquoting me too now, because it, I, I, I didn't say that. I'm not, I'm, I think population... Uh, I didn't say you said it, so therefore I didn't misquote you. Well, you, you said that I... I, I, I said people call and that. say that, and my response is okay, that right. the poor and the dumb will always make up the difference. Okay, yeah. But don't you think the poor and the dumb would tend to have more stable families and more food on the table and better educations uh, with two parents involved? I mean, statistically, you can't argue with that. I, I can argue with that. There's no guarantee that people getting together and having a family are going to have better educations. As a matter of fact, uh, if, you have to, you, if you have to pay for children, you're not going to college. Mm, no, I mean... Yeah, that, that, that's an argument, but the probability, I, I would guess, assume that the, the statistically would be higher for those who have... Uh, Why would you assume? Well, what statistic? Well, I would say... I, they, they, People get better educations when they have children? When they are raised in stable families, yes. No, no, we're not talking about what's good for children. Okay. We are not talking about that. We're talking about what's good for the listener, who is a man. What's yeah. good for men? What's good for men is what right. makes them happy. Right, and and the bottom line here is that uh, what you're advocating is for people who put children ahead of themselves. Now, if they want to do that, that's up to them. But well, I am telling men what's best for them. 
what makes them happy is to live in a happy society. And no, not necessarily. Them not to get married. And then, by the way, having children does not make this a happier society. Because if you believe that, what about the 50% of marriages that end in divorce with guys who have to see their children ripped away from them? With guys who have to pay child support so women can tart themselves up so they can throw themselves at the next procreator? Okay, well, it's, it's, a, it's a logical chain where if you say that a, a family leads to more education, you're going to have a better society. And, and Again, and I did not society. say that. You said that. I don't agree with it. I think men will be better educated by not being in a relationship, by not getting married, and by not having families. Okay, but you didn't let me finish. When one lives in a better society, then one is individually more happy as a man. Again, I do not believe that we are going to have a better society by getting married because right now 50% of marriages end in divorce. So getting married doesn't make society any better. I, and and I, by I the way, I, 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 by the way, it's not our job to make society better. It is our job to make our own lives better. Yeah, I agree. We can barely handle that. I agree. I mean, there's sometimes when I when I misplace my wallet. Well, so I, I, I'm telling men how to personally be happier than they would be if they married some ball-busting bitch who becomes a, a sponge and takes your money and spends it on all this crap in the home that you wouldn't be buying if you were single. For your radio audience that is 18 to 44, but what happens after they're 65 or 70? Who's going to be around them? Are you kidding me? If you, have, if, you, if you have saved and invested your money, you can hire the best professionals in the world to come in and take care of you. Yeah, not in this country. Maybe in Mexico you can have caretakers all you want, but not in this country. Oh, yes. So you have to... If you save and invest the way I have saved and invested and I am not married, uh, you, can, you can pay the best professionals there are. Okay, well, well, I hope I hope the listeners who who uh, wind up in retirement and, and single, I'm not saying that they all have to uh, save up enough. Getting money married to, doesn't guarantee you anything. Just ask the fifty percent of people who get divorced. It doesn't guarantee you anything. What it does pretty much guarantee is that you're going to be paying for the privilege of being married, and when it doesn't work out, you're going to pay even more. Well, I, I didn't say it. It's a, you know, we're talking to an audience right now, and they're listening to us right now. Yeah. I, I want to say hello to all the men out there who are living in studio apartments near a freeway because they can't afford to live in a house because their wives live in their house. The wives live in the house with the new boyfriend or the new husband or the new husband's children. And these guys are living in apartments with the big now renting sign outside, or if you lived here, you'd be home by now sign on the side of the building. These guys don't think marriage is such a great deal, and there's a lot of them out there. Okay, well, but I think it's I think it's fearful, and I think I think you're trying to put off something that might not. I'm not happen. putting it off. I'm telling people to not do it, not put it off. Just don't do it. I give you long-term individual personal uh, happiness. Again, it does not make mo In fact, most people get married are not happy. Half of them get divorced. And then what about the people who stay married who aren't happy? You've got at least 51% there of people who are not happy with what they got. Mm -hmm. Well, that um, means the majority. And that means you're better off not doing it. Well, then, then we go back into our original argument of, of uh, education and society and whether or not a, a better society. Uh, go make a better society. What is your wife say? I'm not married. Well, why, don't you, uh, why aren't you making a better society then? I mean, you can do that as an individual. Why thing, aren't you? No, no, no. Why don't you go get married? What are you waiting for? Well, I'm. Oh, so you think marriage is good for everybody else? But here you are, 31 years old, and it's not. It has no uh, appeal to you, does it? Uh, well, it's not that it hasn't. So you'd like everyone else to get married, but not you. Well, perhaps I think. That, oh, uh, so I, okay. So way, you'd like to I live as an unmarried life. person, but you'd like to see all the other poor, pathetic saps get married. No, I don't think they're poor, pathetic. I think. I think. Then why aren't you doing it? Why it doesn't it doesn't mean that I have to? Why I, aren't I just, you doing it? If it's good, if you are on the air, together. if you're on the air, if you're on the air preaching this, you should be married now. No, not necessarily. Oh, I'm, all the other people should get married, but not you. Well, okay, you've got a point. I mean, just because yeah, I got I, a big I point. Argue the case of marriage just because I'm not married. Uh, clearly, you can't. I mean, if it's so good, why aren't you doing it? If it's so good for you, why aren't you doing it? I don't know. I'm working on finding the right lady. Oh yes, you're 31. What are you going to grow up, son? Grow up, son. Son.
When are you going oh, to grow I'm, up? Yes. Oh, no, I, I consider myself grown up. Yeah, I know you do. And you still can't find the right lady. Jesus Christ, what a hypocrite. Our email address is my name, Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.